I mean, I think my mom certainly could use a crash course. She'd be upset to hear this, but... Tiffany Thiessen, actress and cookbook author and host of Deliciousness. And I'm Nick DiGiovanni, a very talented chef, a content creator and author of Knife Drop, Creative Recipes Anyone Can Cook. Hey, Tiffany. It's so nice to meet you. I know you know, I've been a huge fan of you for a very, very long time. I had to explain to my husband that I follow a very cute guy on Instagram and social media. And the reason why is because you're a great cook. <laughs> <'Cause> <laughs> I know we have, sounds like many mutual friends and we've wanted to we meet do, forever. We do. Yeah. So I'm so yeah. excited for this. Awesome. Well, tell me a little bit about your new book that's coming out. Yeah. And I know you have one too. So I'm excited to hear about it as well. I wish I had a copy around here. I don't have a copy in front of me. It's hard to get a copy of your own book. Like when you start. Oh, out. I know. Oh, um, I know. It's so true. And remind me the title of yours. Uh, it's called here we go again. Okay. So this will, and this will be my second, my actually my second cookbook. I have so I might need to talk to you because I haven't done this before and it's a lot. Yeah. It's a lot. It's a lot. It's a lot. I, I used to say this, Nick, this is, and you won't really tor- totally understand this, but I said it was like birthing a child with four hard corners. <laughs> it's and hard. I know you're a man and it's hard to understand that, but <laughs> yes. every woman would understand if they've had a child. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. It's hard. My first book is called Knife Drop. Uh, it's, it's a bunch of creative recipes that, in my opinion, anyone can cook. I want anyone to be able to pick up this book and make anything out of it. Um, I pulled together a bunch of different things uh, in my background, whether it's family or the different places I've traveled to, um, kind of the whole nine yards to really try to put all my learnings into one place. And I, and I, and I really truly tried not to hold back with, with any little tip or any little lesson I've learned along the way. I have tried to work it in in some way in this book. Where did your where did your passion come from with cooking? Like where did it start? I I think very simply I always it it, it was family. I mean, yeah. I come from a few different backgrounds and I also know you love cooking with your family it sounds yeah. like and just Well, it's where it's where it started for me too. It was all the women in the in the they were always in the kitchen and I wanted to be with all the cool women in my family cooking. So Yeah, I think especially I I admired my my dad's mom, my grandmother and she she would put on these six course meals for for up to 25, 30, 40 people on, on these That's big amazing. holidays, which is insane. Um, and, it's, and it's not easy to do. That's no. like full on catering. No, she did it by herself. Yeah. I mean, she, she had her own, basically a sole catering company yeah. in, in those, yeah. in those, on those days. And, and that was really impressive. Even when I was young, I would watch it and, um, and I didn't want to get in the way, but I just kind of took in everything that I could. Yeah. And so it's just, yeah. I mean, you're like, a, you're like a little sponge. I was a tiny little baby sponge at that time. And yeah. then I've yeah. tried to stay a sponge all the way through. Yeah. That's amazing. That's so amazing. Are you able to, to, I, I, I know it's always, it, you don't want to give away too much early on with a book. And, and I know you've yeah, done no, this all no. before, but can you give me yeah. a little sense of, cause I know we have some of the similar passions on the environment yeah. and it sounds like your new book kind yes. of plays into that yes. a little bit. So I would love to well, hear yeah, I mean, my first book was definitely very family driven recipes, stuff that I grew up doing and kind of modernizing a little bit, you know, taking a lot of the stuff my mom and my grandmother and my aunt were doing and, and sort of making it my own a little bit. So it was very family driven recipes, the first book, this next book that's coming out is called Here We Go Again, it comes out in September. And it was really based on now that I have children. Um, I, my biggest thing is teaching my kids about waste. I think it's one of our biggest issues in global warming about food waste. And so I really wanted to teach my children that there's really so many things you can do with leftover food, whether it's a little bit of the cereal that's left from the box or that buttermilk that you bought for another recipe. Well, there's other things you can do with it. Don't let it spoil. So it was really just a teaching to my children and and also my husband, because he always had this analogy of like leftovers are gross and I wanted to show him that they're not like you can really do really cool things with leftovers so that's yeah. really the gist of the book is just like showing how many things you can do with buttermilk how many things you can do with you know the, the bottom of the pretzel bag there's a little bit left you could do something with it and I can show you how to do it yeah absolutely I mean I think my mom certainly could use a crash course she'd be upset to hear <laughs> this but on, on on how to on how to really uh treat your leftovers well my dad yeah. My dad too, I think, makes a lot of jokes about the leftovers we had growing up. But at the same time, I think it's one of those things that made me appreciate food yeah. every time we had it. Um, and right. 
and um and and now that makes me so conscious about um about all this yeah about all this well and i think i i grew up in a family where my dad worked two jobs my mom just allowed my mom to stay home and we were we didn't have a lot of money we were stretching food throughout the entire week so it really came from sort of a, a way of learning that my mom was always trying to make it you know kind of reinvent basically the stuff that we had from the chicken from monday and there's something else on thursday you know yeah absolutely Absolutely. I have so many great recipes that I created, um, you know, for this next cookbook called Here We Go Again. But some of the ones that I constantly use is cereal. First of all, there's so many great things you can do with leftover cereal, Um, leftover chips, leftover crackers, leftover, you know, just there's there's endless amounts of things. And I think my kids love the most is I make these cereal milk bars, you know, where they're like ice cream bars, but they're nice. leftover from leftover cereal. It's probably one of their most favorites. Yes. I what would about lo- you? I would love to taste those at some point. I, yeah. <laughs> I, um, well, you know what I've gotten really into is, is the herb is, is herbs and, and, yeah. and whether just, just the first day I remember sticking green onions into just a little simple glass like this. Um, and then seeing them shoot up in the fridge, um, or out on the That's counter. Cool. I think that's yeah. really fun. So like regrowing. It's almost sort like of like really regrowing. It's a little life hack where you really never have to go to the grocery store and buy green onions again if you don't want to. Um that's amazing. so stuff like that I think is fun. And those are one of the things that for me for a long time would go bad all the time and I would mm-hmm. just throw out these old wilted uh, yep. dill or parsley or cilantro or whatever it was. Or or what about the arugula bag that you thought you were gonna use and then <laughs> yeah, days I, later you're like, Oh god. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so so I like I, I've gotten into sort of trying to figure out the, the, how to make herbs last as long as they possibly can. That's um, very cool. And that's been one of my little projects. And I, I you it's know, it's like a science project. You're doing science yeah. in your kitchen. Yeah, yeah. Like I've it. been running experiments on that. So that's been fun <laughs> for me. Yeah, yeah. And going off of that, I, I'm curious to hear because I mean, like I said, I used to just uh, not just herbs, but but there are other things that happen all the time, as you know, in the, in the kitchen where. Um, where things don't go the way that you plan. Mm-hmm. What have been some of your biggest challenges in the kitchen? Oof. Well, I mean, for me, my challenges are very different cooking now for a family than they are when I was, you know, in my 20s cooking for myself or, you know, for friends or whatever. It was very, very different. Like, I felt like, you know, I was able to laser focus into a recipe and do pretty well with that. I mean, you know, like a lot of times there's always fails of, you know, turning turning the corner and not paying attention, but Nowadays, it's all about multitasking in the in the kitchen. So it's like I'm cooking dinner, but then I'm still having to help with my child with their homework, and my husband's you know needing something or you know. So it's like my biggest challenge is just making sure I get it done yeah. <laughs> in time for dinner. You know what I mean? Like yeah. it's literally like okay, he needs help with math, and then my daughter needs something, and then my husband, and then you know I got to go out and get the chicken eggs, and you know like all these different chores at once, and I'm not just cooking. So the simple task of cooking is not just cooking anymore. It's truly the multitasking. That's my biggest challenge now. What yeah, about you? that can be tricky. I'm sure. I mean, I haven't quite dealt with that <laughs> exactly. But although I will say, I mean, growing up, we all had chores at home and I have three younger yeah, brothers. Yeah. And so my, this is great. When your chore doesn't feel like a chore, it's the best kind of chore you can possibly have. Agreed. Mine would often be dinner, and cooking dinner yeah. or making the meals, which I think everyone was very happy about. Yeah. And I think eventually most people in my family caught on to the fact that it was didn't feel like a chore for me. And then I would get looped into the garbage and looped into cleaning yeah. the dog, the dog's bed out and that kind of thing. But, um, but that was great for a while. I got away yeah. with the, yeah. I got away with that being my chore. So um, was that your first love of getting into cooking was the chore that you had to actually cook? Uh, I, if I really try to think back, I think it was probably more just seeing food as that thing that tied all of our family together and purely just loving food. Mm-hmm. I, I remember one of my favorite foods as a kid was radishes and, and radishes are very wow. bitter and I don't even know if yes. I like them that much now. And, and, um, but you but had I, a thing for radishes back then. I would get, I would get a stock just, and I would just chew them off the end of there and they're so bitter and intense. So I can't yeah. believe I was able yeah. to do that, but I would well, always it ask. Probably for says something about your. It probably says something about your palate. That's pretty amazing because that's not normal for a no, child. No, no, that's really <laughs> strange. Um, yeah, yeah. So I don't know what it was. It was very, it was very interesting. And ironically, I wouldn't consider myself as a very good sweet. And and I, I'm better with savory sweets and and baked mm-hmm. goods. It's not it's not my forte. Me too. Uh, yeah. But I also like. I I also enjoy if I go to a restaurant, I would rather get another savory dish as a dessert course than get Me a too. dessert. Me too. Um, I'm totally the same way. Which is funny. But I, yeah. I I think another part of it as a kid, and I'm sure you've dealt with this, having kids is just 
I would literally reach into the pantry and take handfuls of sugar and eat the sugar. Um, <laughs> I just wanted sugar. And so I think I found early on that if I gave my mom an ingredient list of stuff to make a lemon meringue pie that I would share with the family, sugar's got to be on the list. Yeah. And I was getting my sugar fix that way. Um, I so get I, it. All it's right. very interesting. Sneaky. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, That's which is funny. great. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's funny. Kids love, I know my daughter loves to bake. Like she loves to bake more than she loves to cook with me. What's a food fail for you? What was a food fail in your in your kitchen that you remember? A big one. I mean, for me, it, it, it's interesting because it's different. It's in a way also it's different now, right? I, I think the, the most recent one was probably we had, we, had, we had set up this huge project. We tried to do the Guinness World Record for the biggest dumpling. Oh, I saw that. Yeah, but it was a, a major, major <laughs> fail. I mean- Can't win them all. The, the dough melted off the dumpling. It was horrible. Yeah. Um, we yeah. tried to make yeah. this big contraption with a big box that was a steamer and it was going to be, I don't know, a, a 50 to 75 pound dumpling. And then it just Holy melted. Moly. That is such a funny thing to say as my food fail, but that, that was probably my latest food fail. Um, yeah. Was, uh, was that. But one to remember, one to put on the, on the board. Definitely one to remember yeah. still. The things that I do with food now are, are so all over the place. Yeah. I'm sure the same for you. It's been a really funny yeah. kind of all over the place path. Well, it's fun. I mean, I, I literally purely found you via, you know, the social media aspect. Um, yeah. It wasn't even through, it wasn't even through our connections. I just liked your videos and I liked your energy on, on camera and you were, you're super fun to watch. And, and it's, it's funny how food has really taken over like the social media, you know, like it's, it's pretty amazing how much people who don't even really cook just like to watch food videos, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And back in my day, it wasn't social media. It was Food Network. You know what I mean? You were like, you would just keep Food Network on and you would just keep it going all day long because your kids could watch it or, you know, it was, it was not offensive. It was just a really nice, easy thing to have in the background. Yeah, I, it is interesting. It's been interesting for me also, and I'm sure many people to kind of watch how the whole space is evolving. I mean, what do you think about all of it? Like the fact that TV is sort of not fizzling away, but it's just different than it used it's to be. It's just different. Yeah. Well, it's funny, you know, like even just five years ago when I was doing, you know, a TV show, like the, the stand and stir was slow. It was very like, you know, very conversational, which I think it still is. But, you know, nowadays with social media, it is so fast. The cuts are fast. The recipes are fast. Like it's a whole different ball game than what I was doing on Food Network and, and Cooking Channel just five, six years ago. Yeah. You know, it's just a very different pace. And I think it has a lot to do with the younger generation and just how you see that people are, are, are almost ingesting a lot more, a lot faster, I guess. Yeah, absolutely. Well, we were talking about social media and I mean, there's all these yeah. kind of young, new people writing books now. Yeah. And yeah. now with the internet as big as it is, why would anyone really want to go buy a cookbook? But I think you having <laughs> those like, I mean, you have that really kind of intense personal touch on it where the recipes in, I'm sure both of yeah. our books have so much more love than just some random um, recipe that you look up online and they have those food is all about those little kind of mm -hmm. sometimes the nuances and those little extra yeah. touches well and i like i like the stories that go along with the yeah, food. yeah so i mean you yeah. can say i have rooms of cookbooks all yeah. throughout my house this is not it's not just in the kitchen yeah and i i love buying cookbooks because they're almost like coffee table books to me to a certain degree but also i like reading the stories of where the food or the recipe came from yeah um, I read them like a normal book and, and I, I do know there's a lot of people out there. I don't, I know they're not all like that, but for me, that's, that's what cookbooks do for me. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I always said that if it, it was a dream when I was younger to write one and I always said that if I ever wrote one, I wanted it to also serve as a coffee table book where it can just yeah. be beautiful photos and I want little yeah. fun blurbs in there and that yeah, kind of thing so that it. I totally am on the same page as you. And then it's, and then it's like a memory book for you too. Later on that you'll get to look back yeah, and see. Exactly. Yeah, um, on a personal note. Okay. So Nick, tell me, what do you have? What else do you have? Like, do you have any other like Guinness world record thingies you want to do? I mean, those are kind of, they're, they're very fun for me to watch. I, I know they're the audience fun. loves watching those. They're very yeah. fun. We just recently did our, our ninth one. It's not out yet or anything, but that, it's that, not was, out yet? Okay. that was our best planned out one so far. We felt really good with the whole thing. It, it looked, it looked perfect. Um, we were very, very happy with it. So we just did our ninth one. We're definitely getting better at just just getting all the planning in place. Can you tease what it is or no, not yet? I don't, I don't know if I'm allowed to with Guinness. They're very strict actually. Yeah. Um, okay. However, good to know. I've uh, never done Guinness. I don't know. Well, I've only drank you know, it. I was going to tell you, you have a lot of cookbooks in your house. 
They have a record for most cookbooks. Oh, um, really? So you should look into it. It's actually currently okay. held by someone. I, I live in Boston. It's held by someone from Massachusetts, but you might be Do able to. Do you know to- how many? Do you know how many it is? Yeah, it's, I think it's 2,000 something. So I don't know yeah. if you, I don't know yeah. if you'll hit, but maybe. I, if- might, be ju- I might be just under a thousand i would say maybe. that's impressive so, that's impressive that's impressive i know I really know. impressive my, my husband doesn't think it's impressive just like <laughs> well <laughs> i do think um we'll probably do more more guinness world records yeah. on the road yeah. or just crazy food yeah. projects and one- i have a good question for you yeah, I, have yeah. a good, I have a great question for you yeah. if you could cook for anybody who would it be that you haven't cooked for yet. Do they have? And I know you've cooked for a lot of like celebrities and stuff. Is it so? Do, and the person has to be it alive. Could be, it could, no, no, no. Let's go totally. It could just all be the way anybody, just anybody, ever? anybody. Okay, that's a great question. Do you have an answer mm-hmm. while I'm thinking? Uh, for me? Yeah. Hmm. I feel like I would want to do somebody like way back in the day, right? Like I would have to really go back to like before stoves, <laughs> right? Make it difficult. <laughs> You know what? If I could cook for anybody, I'd probably cook for my grandmother. I'd probably cook for my dad's uh, mom. I really would. Everybody watching this right now just went, aww. I, I, I really, truly That's would. Sweet. because I, I, She never got to see my love for food. I, I was too uh, young at that time. And I think, she, yeah. I think she'd like that. That's pretty awesome. That's yeah. a great answer. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. I love that. That's really sweet.